Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Deshaun and this is Lush Uncut. So I have mentioned this on my channel before, but I wasn't super engaged with politics until about 2018 and 2020, where literally every single thing became super duper political. And honestly speaking, one of my biggest regrets is that I missed out on the 2016 presidential race. And that is primarily because of Donald Trump and the time that he spent on Twitter, which is now known as X. I think everyone in political land can, you know, and have come to the conclusion that one of the major reasons why Donald Trump was able to get the attention that he got, you know, be able to create the organic base of supporters that he has been able to create is because of the fact that he was constantly sending updates to his millions of followers on Twitter on the daily basis. Fast forward to 2021, January 6th, after the riots at the Capitol, Trump was kicked off of Twitter and most of the social media platforms that he would use to engage his followers. Later on, he created Truth Social, which was basically supposed to be another route for his followers to be able to get updates from him um, without having to go through Twitter, you know, Facebook and all the other social media platforms that kicked him out. Unfortunately, True Social really did not become what I think he was hoping for it to become because people have been using Twitter since I don't even know when the platform force first came out, but people were used to Twitter and people, you know, most people just did not transfer their time and attention to Truth Social. Now, since then, People like myself who are chronically online, who pay way too much attention to politics, have been waiting to see if and when Donald Trump was going to return to X. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, the day has come upon us. Donald Trump earlier this morning posted this video to X, basically announcing his return to the platform. Let's take a look at that video. Now project the winner of the presidential race. Donald Trump wins the presidency. What started off as unlikely, impossible, is now reality. I will fight for you with every breath in my body, and I will never, ever let you down. We have a president who actually fulfilled the promises he made during Trump the campaign. Securing the border to foreign he policy. He now has a record as president that's pretty damn impressive. Breaking news out of Paul The Beach FBI War. has executed an unprecedented search warrant at President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago Mar-a-Lago Estate. Former State. president has both sides of the political aisle up is in arms. a arm. dangerous and unstable moment in American history. The Justice Department has just indicted former President Donald Trump. For seven years, they hated him, they targeted him, they hunted him. This is the epitome of the abuse of the prosecutorial power to preempt political decisions. I never thought anything like this could happen in America. In addition to that, Donald Trump has an interview with Elon Musk scheduled for later this evening at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And a lot of people are very much looking forward to that interview because obviously it's Elon Musk and Donald Trump and obviously it's going to be interesting. Now, there are a ton of positives to Trump returning to X. First and foremost, he gets to do what he did in 2016 and sent direct updates to his supporters and to the general American public, you know, free from filter, free from, you know, the ridiculous, you know, manipulation that the mainstream media does to literally everything that he says. That way he could communicate to his his supporters directly without all that extra filtering. In addition to that, the mainstream media is not going to have a choice but to talk about what Donald Trump talks about on X. And the fact of the matter is Donald Trump is going to have to be the one, Donald Trump and JD Vance is going to have to be the ones who tell the American public just how often Kamala Harris is and just how awful her policies are because the mainstream media has completely failed the American public in their job and responsibility in showing them what Kamala Harris is. Now, it's one thing for them to gloss over her record, you know, and sugarcoat it, but it's another thing for them to not talk about it at all. And that's what they have been doing. They haven't put any pressure on the Harris campaign to have her sit down for a long form interview or do a press conference or answer any super difficult questions. So Donald Trump is going to have to put that 
attention back on him and then shine the light on just how trash Kamala Harris is. So this is very exciting. And I think this is really like one of the best options they had because since Harris announced her, you know, run for office, she has gotten nothing but wall to wall positive coverage from the mainstream media. So again, they are not going to do their job because if they were, then it would have done it a very long time ago. Now, in addition to Trump announcing his return to X, J.D. Vance over the weekend sat down with a number of major media outlets to address some of their concerns answer some tough questions and so on and so forth one of those interviews he did was with cnn's dana bash and since trump announced jd vance as his running mate the mainstream media has taken some clips from some things that he said i think three or so years ago about people that choose not to have children and they have branding him branded him i'm sorry as a super authoritarian you know natalist that hate people that don't have children and and want to control people and so on and so forth. So this is him addressing some of that with Bash. Let's take a look at it. Because you do criticize, as you just did, the Democratic Party for being anti-family. I do. You called out Kamala Harris and Pete Buttigieg in particular. Kamala Harris has two stepchildren. Pete Buttigieg and his husband have adopted twins. Do you recognize them as parents and more broadly as being part of families? Well, of course I do, Dana. I mean, you know my life story. Well, I was I actually say, raised. Of course, I, I was raised, but Dana, I, I was raised. I mean, one, of the, name. one of the first people that I gave a hug to after my, my RNC convention speech was my stepmom, who's been an incredibly important person in my so life. She's not my childless. Kids, my kids call her mammal. Of course she's not childless. But, but again, you called her that. the criticism, I certainly did not call my own stepmom childless. No, no, no. Childless. Kamala Harris. I criticized Kamala Harris for being part of a set of ideas that exists in American leadership that is anti-family. I never, Dan, I criticize people for not having kids. I criticize people for being anti-child. And I do think that Kamala Harris she's has made some bizarre statements. She has said things like, it's reasonable not to have children over climate change. I think it's the exact opposite message we should be sending to our young families. I want to expand the child tax credit. I want to stop those surprise medical bills. I want to make housing more affordable so that if you have a young family, you can actually afford to put them in a home and I think that it is unfortunate that so much of our public leadership has become anti-family. Wonderful answer. And, you know, the crazy thing is no matter how many times I see these interviews with J.D. Vance or Donald Trump or any Republican and the mainstream media, it would never cease to amaze me just how adversarial they tend to be towards Republicans. And I know at this point, I think a large portion of the American public knows that they are nothing more than the mouthpiece and the PR form for the Democratic Party. But it still blows my mind because, you know, the lack of objective journalism in is just ridiculous. Either way, J.D. Vance in this interview, and I think in most of the interviews that he has had with the mainstream media, has proven as to why he is, in fact, the best choice for Trump as a running mate. He answers their questions directly. He never allows them to bait him into these frivolous conversations about things that simply don't matter, where they can then use it and spin it to benefit the Harris campaign. He sticks to the policies. He sticks to his point, And he manages to rise above a lot of their buffoonery. So he's proving himself to be quite a threat to the Democrat establishment because if Trump wins in November and then J.D. Vance spends the next four years as his VP, he has a pretty strong case, or I'm assuming he would have a pretty strong case for the presidency in 2028. And he's only just going to get better. You know, you don't have this skill set and, you know, lose it, you know, I mean, if you're Joe Biden and lose it. <laughs> In a matter of four years, the man, he just he just knows how to handle them. So I think all of this is a net positive for Trump and Vance because, again, it resets the media cycle to focus on them and not the Harris campaign because the media is not going to push um, Harris. They're not going to put any pressure on her campaign to actually talk to voters about her policy. So I am looking forward to what Donald Trump is going to bring to X. I know it's not going to be the same 2016 
pizzazz. You know, he is, for the most part, a little different than he was in 2016, so I'm not expecting the same thing. But it is going to be nice to be able to hear what Donald Trump, you know, thinks and what he has to say and kind of just be able to engage with him. I mean, it's not like he's going to retweet me or anything, but you know what I mean? It's, it should be fun. And hopefully this kind of shifts the attention and the, the momentum back into the favor of the Republican side of the aisle. Thank you.